You're watching the Bethel College Football Show. I say, brother, you stay hooked! Brother, 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 brother! A.B. Stokes, the head football coach at Bethel College for the Threshers. Coming back is his first season as a head coach and the collegiate level and the 2022 season is well at hand. Coach, how have you been lately? I've been pretty good, you know, just trying to get ready for the, for the season and uh, trying to make sure these, these young men are ready as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Try to think, make sure you didn't forget something or cover every base, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm an overthinker. So I definitely, I'd rather uh, think about the smallest thing than to get to the game and, and not be ready. Absolutely. Very detail oriented. As I've listened to, you know, talking to your players and even your coaches, uh, you know, about just, you know, keeping that hunger alive. Oh. Obviously, you walk into a program that has so many returning and key players as well and a lot of prestige within the last few years and it's kind of been tasked on you to keep that going right absolutely and it's an exciting thing you know but uh the weight just don't doesn't fall on on me right it falls on um just our, our program in general and i think i think the guys understand that because you know the more we can spread it out uh the easier the load is for everybody Absolutely. You've been on the job for about nine months now, and the camp has successfully wrapped up, and now game week is here, and Atlantis University mm -hmm. comes to town. 11.30 a.m. kick from Thresher Stadium, and uh, I'll have the call on the KCAC Network, uh, and you can go to kcacnetwork.com to watch that if you have the KCAC Network app as well. So we'll start between 11 and 11.30 for our broadcast, but uh, glad you're watching here for another season of this show. Um, talking, to, We mentioned camp a little bit. Uh, what were your thoughts um, you know, with how camp went this year? I mean, this is a, a different experience for you being at the helm mm -hmm. of things. Well, I thought, I thought camp went um, rel relatively well. Obviously, uh, you, you won't know how camp went until, you know, the, really the season's over and you're going into next year's camp. But um, I, I like, I like where, where we're at. Um, I like the effort and the energy that the guys have uh, put into not just football but things off the field, like growing, you know, closer as a, as a brotherhood and a family. And uh, so I, I've been pleased with uh, just the progress that's been made. But, uh, it, you know, you, you, you never know until you start playing games. So we're excited to see what, how the work's going to pay off. And uh, we'll, we'll be ready to we'll be ready to reevaluate, you know, come, come December. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you know, we, we talk about football side of a lot of things within this show, but uh, just kind of summarizing a little bit, a lot about what camp is of getting players minds right. At the same time, the theme this year it seems like burn the ships, the yes, attitude uh, for the people that just see that on social media. What do you mean when you're, you and your players are saying burn the ships towards this season? So it's, it's just a new journey. So a lot's been, been done, um, a lot's been accomplished over the last few years. And um, the biggest mistake that we could make is to just try to uh, expect that to just fall into our laps. And we, we have to create our own path. So basically, burn the ships is the we can't turn back. We can't look backwards uh, this season. Uh, when it's over, we can appreciate everything uh, that's been done and, and whatever we've built on top of the success. Uh, but we, right now, we, we, we can't give ourselves an exit plan. We've got to continue to move forward and progress, and, and that's the whole mentality behind Burn the Ships. Absolutely. And Coach A.B. Stokes here on the Thresher Football Show. The Threshers picked 
depending on what poll you look at, the media or the coaches' poll in, in the top four, to be safe to say, third in one poll, fourth in the other. Um, obviously, you have the likes of Southwestern, Kansas Wesleyan, and even Avila in that conversation amongst the polls. Um, obviously, everybody knows how last year finished. Um, you know, with a few of those teams in the postseason, and uh, things are coming down the pipe to really better things for KCAC teams to have a chance at the postseason. But um, when you saw, I know you gave your talk during that time and that virtual media day, mm -hmm. uh, but when you saw some of those, what coaches said, maybe the picks that were made, uh, what was your reaction? Uh, really, I, I, I didn't, I, I try to stay pretty level. So um, my reaction was no different than it was before that. It's just like, hey, well, time to go to work. You know, right. time to go to work because uh, at the end of the day uh, it, it's all it's all prediction and uh, I, I know I could almost speak for every every coach in this conference that unless you you, you picked at the top you're not satisfied with, with where you're at like you, you're trying to the goal of, of everyone in this conference is to win it uh, so uh, regardless of where we where we pick it doesn't it doesn't change our goals absolutely the threshers Come into this year um, after three straight seasons where they won at least eight games and obviously a postseason berth and back-to-back co-conference championships. And uh, uh, for those of you that weren't aware, Coach A.B. Stokes was with the program as an assistant for some time for 2018-2019 seasons and then comes back uh, hired last year after the season to be the head coach of the Threshers. And, uh, you know, you're getting ready for the first game. Um, you play Atlantis University. Uh, we'll talk about them in a little bit, but it's it's a good opportunity to, you know, just see are we really what we think we are going into a game? Because, you know, I've heard you talk in practices a little bit, but, you know, we think we're really good right now, but we got to go out there and earn it, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, and that, that that's the thing, like, you – you never know because all you know is what you have. You don't know what other people have. Uh, so it, it's fun. It makes it exciting to go in and to, to test yourselves against uh, other programs. So mm -hmm. we're excited about it. Absolutely. Again, the Threshers and the Atlanteans. I'm going to get used to saying that Atlantis. at some point. It's, it's, <laughs> there's a Atlantis. little bit into that, but uh, Atlantis University and Bethel College, uh, no doubt, first ever meeting. <laughs> ever. <laughs> So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit of how that matchup came to be. But, uh, Coach, just kind of talking about, you know, some of the uh, personnel, players, and coaches that you brought in. Obviously, um, you know, some coaches staying as well as players from mm -hmm. the previous pro part of the program that was here mm -hmm. uh, and a good portion of it as well. And But then you bring in guys that are really good. Uh, Coach Grider, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he <laughs> – Seems to be a player favorite. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Coach Langford, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, Coach Schultz, uh, Coach Burgess. I mm -hmm. mean, there's just a handful of guys there um, that are coming in, and they they understand the expectations. They want to be a part of it. Oh, absolutely. And so three three of those guys, uh, Coach Burgess, uh, Coach Langford, and Coach Greider, they all have head coaching experience with Coach Greider being a, a veteran uh, high school head football coach with 23 years of head coaching experience. And that's just kind of knowledge that, you know, you, you can't substitute anything for experience. Uh, and then we, we've we added on uh, Coach Coach Cam Harrison, who played here, he was an All-American slot, and Coach Avery, who was an All-Conference uh, D lineman. Uh, we've added those two guys on. And then we, we have uh, uh, Dominic Copeland, who actually played here as well, who's, who's staying on as a student coach. Um, right now with a host of other student coaches and to throw in those guys who came back. And they do. The guys who, who are coming back, like Coach, Coach Mitchum, uh, Coach Gilmore, Coach uh, uh, Markham, and Coach Denton, like th those guys, they understood the expectation uh, from uh, Coach Harrison and, and the previous staff and, and what we did to – kind of create the success here mm -hmm. and but n now it's one of those things where this is new territory right because it's sustaining success not necessarily creating it it's already been created it uh, created and so uh, they're they're learning my expectation on what I believe uh, it takes to sustain it so it's uh but they're all on board it's been fun we've been having a lot of fun but we've also been been coaching re really really hard and I, I think uh, I think we're all enjoying it. I think the the guys are enjoying it and buying into uh, what we're trying to what we're trying to bring to to, to Bethel. 
Absolutely. No doubt those returning coaches, a big part of retention, which is at this level of athletics, of college, it just in general is extremely important uh, to the welfare of the institution. And no doubt they, they played a pivotal part in our stepping up with more and more responsibilities. And, you know, as far as helping players stay with the program mm -hmm. at the same time, I mean, you know, you, you have a healthy dose of players that have been here uh, three, four, and some five years, yeah. and some good leadership in place, and a good thing to build upon. Absolutely, and and um, I was telling somebody the other day that the leadership on this team is, is unreal. It, it's really it's really a player led team right now with all of the veterans uh, that we have back, which is which is crazy in a head coach's first year. Mm -hmm. You know, to have a player led team because most of the time it's a coach trying to. Uh, lay down this foundation of expectations. But these guys, you know, they've got their own set of expectations as well. And, and some days I'm just like, let me just stay out of their way. Absolutely. Well, and you have personal experience, um, you know, from your college days. Mm -hmm. um, we, we talked about it this week a little bit about your own personal experience where you stayed on after a coaching change I and did. you saw a, tremendous results yeah. as far as the ability to keep that going at least for that next season. So um, based on that personal experience, you know, you know, the things that have to turn. Absolutely. And, and uh, like I said, it, the, the players take charge and a lot of these guys have played in a lot of big football games and they've won a lot of big football games and won a lot of football games in general. So they, they know the mentality that they need to bring, uh, not just to a Saturday, but to, you know, to a Tuesday's practice. They know they know how the, you know when things aren't. They know when things don't feel up to par, and and these guys do a good job of. They'll they'll tell us. They'll tell us. They say, man, coach, you know, they, uh, you know, these guys aren't going hard, or we're not going hard enough here, and and we listen. We listen, and uh, it's a couple of things that that they've already shared uh, on things they want to make sure we we don't lose sight of, and and it's been with me. I'm just like, hey, I hear you, and we 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 go with it. Absolutely. Had a chance a little bit. Here's we're wrapping up the first segment to just kind of, you know, take a peek at some of the things that happened, you know, off the field in player meetings. Um, also, just a lot, a lot of close knit things that players and coaches are being involved with here at Bethel College. And uh, no doubt your servant leadership is, you know, trickling down on them and even the servant leaders that were been on this, you know, team on the yeah. roster have definitely stepped up and I mean that's a big that's a big part of uh, what Bethel College does with athletics in general but uh, you know there that's so crucial to keep in the culture you know the way it is and even improving upon it absolutely absolutely and uh, that that's just what we want to be about um, that's what not just the football programs about when you're talking about being a servant leader and, and, you know, doing things right from a cultural standpoint. That's what Bethel College is about. So we, we definitely don't want to let this, this football program down, but we, we don't want to let the college down either. Absolutely. It's the Threshers in their first game. It's week zero in, in AIA football. There was even some games as – early as Thursday this yeah. week. So, uh, you know, it, it's it's here and Bethel's taking on Atlantis. There's other games from other teams in the KCAC that are playing this week zero game. And I can't remember the last time Bethel played it in this kind of week situation, but a uh, chance for, well, uh, 11 games this year and a good chance to get some good wins for the Threshers. They, t they open up with the Atlantis University Atlanteans, 11.30 a.m. kick from Thresher Stadium. And you can watch that on the KCAC network. Well, don't go anywhere. When we come back here on the Thresher Football Show, we'll talk more about players and a few other things and the schedule for this 2022 season. Thresher fans, get ready for the upcoming school year by becoming a member of the Bethel Booster Club. Your membership impacts all athletic programs by paying for experiences last year, such as the Threshbees Award Show, postseason experiences and postseason tickets, the Hall of Fame Banquet, enhanced live streaming equipment, new banners in Thresher Gym, equipment for the Gearing Hall Weight Room, windscreens at Ward Tennis Center, and Thresher Stadium. Be a part of Thresher Athletics history in a booster club that is living out the Bethel College Athletics mission by creating life-changing experiences for our student athletes through four levels of membership plus parent and young alumni specials. Athletics is an integral part of the Bethel College experience and thanks to your support we look forward to growing our success for the future. Visit BethelThreshers.com slash booster club to become a member today. 
We're kicking off another year here at Bethel College, and we need your help in making this another successful season. Thanks to your generosity in the spring, we were able to purchase championship rings and practice jerseys for our players, giving them a big time experience. Since then, we've added several new faces to the program, and we couldn't be more excited to get to work molding a group of upstanding young men. All summer long, our guys have been getting after it in the weight room, and since August 5th, we've been hard at work preparing to put a product on the field that honors the tradition of Bethel College football. With your help, we're ready to make this another great year. Thanks for your generosity, and roll on. Thank you. 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 California. I'm a senior and I play quarterback here. I mean, the recruiting process was just like I was at junior college back home and then I don't really know how it happened, how Coach Stokes got my information, but that's the guy that recruited me. And at first I told him no, like I just want to stay back home and he was just very persistent. He seemed like a really good guy, so I came out here. And then just staying out here, it's, it's just been easy because it's such a close-knit group of guys here and as soon as you get plugged in, this community is awesome and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Just uh, what those what our old coaches say, you're one play away, and that's so real, and it came true in those games, and just staying ready so you don't have to get ready. The support from Bethel has been, I don't even, there's I can't describe it. I'm speechless about it. Like, there's people I don't even, like, really know or have even talked to, and they're donating money to him, to Jake. Uh, all, the, all the boys on the team have donated money. Um, like, just this one that off the top of my head, Junk, just texted me one day. He was like, what's your cash app? and his family or his hometown put on like a bake sale and he, it was like over like $500. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, and it's just crazy the amount of money, like they started a GoFundMe page and after a day it was, the goal was already met, which is so crazy. And it's just how God works. Like he has a plan for him and it's just amazing. Um, I mean, it's just contributing any way that I can. And uh, that's really it. Every game is the same. We're playing ourselves basically. And it's just, I just want to contribute in any way that I can. Welcome back to the Thresher Football Show. Dan Page alongside head football coach at Bethel College, A.B. Stokes. The Thresher is getting set to open up the 2022 season against Atlantis University. The Atlanteans come from Miami, Florida to North Newton, Kansas in this non-conference matchup. And, uh, you know, you may not get it this chance to play a non-conference game for a while with yeah. the, the changes that are going to be added to the conference with potential divisions and uh, Evangel University being added in 2023 is going to be really exciting. But uh, Atlantis University coming to town, 11.30 a.m. kick from Thresher Stadium. You can watch on the KCAC network. I'll have coverage of that play-by-play. -play. This is my fourth year doing it. I can't believe it, but uh, it's been uh, quite the time. Uh, um, so, But this is the third year that we've done this show, and uh, we do this for the you folks watching at home. Um, you know, I, I, Coach, I've, I've sent – like emails of this file or just an audio only file to families and oh, dads awesome. and stuff like that yeah, because awesome. you know they they love this type of thing and th really this show is for you guys there at home so it's glad to continue it again for another season but the Threshers and the Atlanteans um, at 11:30 a.m. from Thresher Stadium watch it on the KCAC network and so coach we we've talked we left off talking about players um, obviously you returned quite a few, um, what, 20 plus seniors. And then we'll talk about some of the newcomers in a moment, but um, you have guys that, you have four All-Americans, NAIA All-Americans mm -hmm. returning to your player personnel, um, guys like Chance Scurry, as well as Josh Seabolt, Trey Palmer, and Keegan Martin. Those mm -hmm. are the four um, All-Americans coming back. Braden Francis arguably <laughs> should be an All-American, but definitely all-conference honors. Um, Absolutely. So many guys that have just been like first-team or second-team all-conference guys. Logan DeMond returning for his final season. He was the 2019 KCAC Special Teams Player of the Year, mm -hmm. his freshman season. 
And so, so many guys, uh, so many that it's it's hard to mention them all, right? Yeah, yeah, it I is. mean, it's it is. but it's a great thing to you know have for this season. Absolutely, and as we were talking about, uh, you know, this team kind of being a, a, a player led team. Though all those guys that that you mentioned, you know, uh, are, are a big part of of the leadership uh, of this team, um, and they they just do a good job of. Um, Holding, holding themselves and one another accountable uh, with Seabold on the, on the defensive side. He's, he's almost like another coach on the field. Um, he, he, he knows defense really well. Um, he, he's familiarizing himself with some of the new uh, schematic things. And then when you, when you have a guy like Chance Curry and Brayden Francis and, you know, Keegan Martin and Ryan Junkermeyer, those guys, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, who've been been playing football here for a very very long time, uh, they they hold the the offensive side accountable. And not only that, they they kind of you know they they do it the right way. Like I asked Chance, just uh, you know, hey Chance, what's your what's your goal uh, for this season? You know, you're coming back for a fifth year, and he's just like, ah, I just want to have fun, coach. And yeah. it's like that that. That's the best answer you you can have because I think when when that big fella's having fun, a lot of other people on defense are not. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I got a taste of in the last scrimmage you guys had, and he just broke some long runs. I'm like, doesn't matter, you know, what you guys run. He's no. he's still gonna be him. DJ is still gonna be DJ. Um, yeah, quarterback. And oh yeah. So, you know, it's it's really exciting to see, and you know, guys that have really ad learned to adapt over the course of the time that they've been here. Um, you talk about uh, the fourth year players at least, they've won at least eight games every year at college. Yeah. And they know what it takes to do that over and over and over. And uh, you know, you know they, they don't care like what the task is at hand, they're going to adjust to it. They, you know, defensive side of the ball, they've played like at least four different defenses in the last few years. Yeah. Um, you know, offensively, things are a little, a little bit different. Um, but, you know, they're football players. Absolutely. And they're smart college kids. I mean, they know how to adapt. Absolutely. And that, that's been the fun part, um, to, to watch these guys um, adapt and uh, for at least – for you know, for the time being, you seem to have, have, have picked it up well and, and understand it, and, and it's something that they can and they can see. You know, they can see themselves being successful within within these systems. Now, uh, I, 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 I'm just so ready to see us play somebody else because I, <laughs> it seems like right now our defense is really, really good, and you know, and our, our offense is, is you know we're progressing and getting there. Uh, but uh, it seems as if our defense is really, really, really good, and I, I want to see our offense against someone else. And plus, the defense knows the plays. We've been playing each other since spring, <laughs> since spring. So they, they know and they, they, they do a good job, though, because, you know, you're going to know what the other team's doing if you scout them well. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's just about doing what you do a little bit better. And you know just you know we're talking about scheme and things like that um, just understanding the game of football but it's so cool to just see some of the guys like at least for one more time go out onto the field guys that have been staples here we mentioned some of their names but mm -hmm. guys that have been here a few years um you know guys like john henson philip williams yes. on defense um you know guys that know what it takes they they've been humble with but they're they're great players uh dagan goodner is a good a good example as well, mm -hmm. the linebacking spot. Caden Miller, pretty good, solid linebacker. Um, you mentioned on the offensive line, you know, so many guys as well. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's really exciting to see um, all of them. And we mentioned 20-plus seniors. Um, man, that's, that's something else. That was the goal. I mean, even when you were first on as an assistant for mm -hmm. this program, you saw teams when you would go and play them on senior day, like yeah. Kansas Wesleyan. I remember that. 30-plus seniors. Yeah, I remember that. And it would be taken forever, and it's like, we know what you need to build toward. Absolutely, and because uh, it's been said uh, time and time again here in these halls that uh, you, you, you win in this conference with juniors and seniors. Um, and the more of those guys you can have on your roster, uh, especially ones who have been invested in your program for, for f three to four years, uh, the, the more opportunity you're gonna have uh, to be successful uh, within this game. So. We're excited. I keep saying it. 
and uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep saying I, I am. I'm excited, man. I'm excited for these for these guys. Uh, I'm excited for Bethel. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to I'm ready to watch these guys play, and uh, I, I think you know regardless they're they're gonna do things right and good things are gonna come to them. Absolutely. We're talking here on the Thresher Football Show with head football coach A.B. Stokes. Thresher's taking on Atlantis University in their season opener at home and 11.30 a.m. kick from Thresher Stadium. And then they play the following week at home for their conference opener against McPherson College. We'll get to the schedule in a little bit. Coach, uh, we talked about some of the guys coming back, um, but also um, you, you have a healthy dose of newcomers as well. You, anybody that went to the spring game or has gone to the scrimmages, it's like, okay, well, who is this guy again? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just getting to know some of those new faces. Um, but you've had some guys, um, you know, transfers and even freshmen kind of come in and, you know, they're playing hard in practice. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, we, we've got so many returners and veterans uh, that it, th- these guys who who coming in, they, I consider them. I, I tell them, consider themselves very fortunate that they have guys to model. It and they, you know, the worst thing is feeling like you need to be thrown into the fire right away. But we do have some guys who who uh, are going to come in and 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 you know play a lot of football. I I, I don't like to to name too many people. Sure. You know what I mean. So I'll just throw a couple. Uh, we, we've got. I'll just talk about the couple of transfers. Uh, uh, Houston Buckner, he transferred from a, a school in Texas. He's going he's gonna to play quite a bit in the defensive secondary. Um, Amani Peoples, uh, he, he transferred uh, from Lake Erie College, uh, and he's going to play some defensive end for us. And then we have a, a slot receiver, um, Tra- Trayvon Madison. He's a fair state transfer, and uh, he's going to play in the slot for us. And then uh, a wide receiver, uh, Dante Hicks, he's a transfer from, I think, Southeast Florida, another NAIA school, um, and, and he's going to play some wide receiver for us. So uh, those are just some of the guys who, who transferred in who you've probably uh, been seeing a little bit of. But we got, I mean, a host of talented freshmen and other guys who, who have come in from, from various places uh, that, that I think are, are, are doing a great job of buying in and, and blending into our brotherhood. Absolutely. Uh, you know, at center position, Ethan Ince coming in and, you know, he's kind of had an interesting situation in transferring from another college in NAI mm-hmm. to Bethel and back home to be with family. Family so attached to the college. Great family, by yeah. the way. Uh, really enjoy. And he's just getting better and better, um, you know, playing center for you guys. And yes, Keegan kind of moving back over to guard. Yeah. You know, he, he got a year under his belt playing center. And, yeah. You know, yeah. but good alignment can do that and mm-hmm. you know we talked about those guys and then so many guys that have been here maybe one or two years already and already making an impact mm-hmm. uh, we talk about like guys like logan birch on the offensive yes. line yeah. uh, dj sears not <laughs> you know yeah. mario quintero yes. and uh Tucker, Tucker Smith, Smith Tucker absolutely. Smith, yep. You know, those guys mm-hmm. definitely getting a chance to adapt to uh, things. And uh, obviously, you know, you know those guys are, are so important. Jairo Castillo yep. um, is going to be He's big on the defensive line. Denzel again. Dixon. Denzel Dixon, back. absolutely, yeah. And so, so many guys, uh, you know, I can't even name all of them. You know, well, it's, I think Bre- Brendan Sanders, he oh, just yeah. had an amazing practice today. Oh, my goodness. And, and one-on-ones, and, I mean, he was – I almost moved him to receiver. <laughs> I think he caught that many interceptions in practice wow. today. Now, now, in all fairness, it was like Coach Cam or Coach Markham throwing the ball. So oh. that might have had something to do with it. <laughs> but, but they'll tell you, they can throw a pretty – I mean, I'm going to tell you, the ball placement was pretty good. Brendan Sanders was making plays out there today. I'm, I'm excited to watch his, uh, uh, his progress. Absolutely. I mean, you can just go to his film last year. First first game of the year, picks off McPherson in the end zone. He, he you know, he had a pick six against Sterling that you saw in the intro of this show. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, it, he made quite the impact last year. And just I remember talking on this show last year about what the performances he had year in or week in and week out. And so very impressive. So it's a mix of all those guys coming together. And you know, everybody has so much anticipation to see what the fruit of that is yeah yeah well you know so when, when, when you do the when you do the harvest when you do the work you know you till the soil and plant the seeds and you know get, put a little water on it and sunshine usually the harvest is good yeah right so that's what we're that's the motto you know we're hoping that the laws of physics don't let us down 
Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit here on the Thresher Show, Thresher Football Show. We talked about coaching staff, all these sorts of different things. We're going to get to Atlantis University, uh, the Atlanteans. I only, I, you know, based on what I've seen of them, you know, only a few years where they've played football. Mm -hmm. um, but they come in from Miami, Florida. Uh, Coach, I'm sure everybody's wondering, how did they get on the schedule for you guys? Well, we, we were desperately looking for a week zero or week 11 game, and uh, there was a school in, in Houston, Texas, North American University, um, and we were we were trying to work something out for a week 11 game, um, but uh, I was a little I was a little slow because I preferred a week zero game as opposed to week 11 because you know new coaching staff, new systems, uh, some other new coaches. I wanted to you know have a have a, have a test run before we jumped into McPherson. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I slow played North American University a little bit. And then when I finally couldn't find any week zero games, they said, uh, I, I said, hey, let's play week 11. And that's when they said they were they were booked and they played Atlantis University okay. um, week 11. And they were the ones who said, hey, I think this guy's looking for a week zero game. I may have him reach out to you. He reached out to me and the rest is history. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's, it's always interesting how, you know, small college football works. Um, you, you know, we've seen Bethel College play anybody from Texas College back in 2019 yeah. uh, in non-con play with Lindsey Wilson in the 2020 season. Yeah. Um, you know, West Texas A&M last year, a Division yeah. II team there at the end. But Atlantis University, um, you know, in the, as far as the regular season goes, is you know, open up the season with a non-conference opponent, uh, the Atlanteans. I'm, I'm still going to get used to saying that on the broadcast. But. You know, fun fact, they're the only school in the country with that mascot, the Atlantean. Well, and we're, the, we're the only school in the country with the mascot of the Threshers. So it's okay. the battle of the onlys, <laughs> there you the go. mascots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, everybody's kind of unique. You kind of have to stand out. It's, mm -hmm. all, you know, for colleges. And of course, um, you know, Bethel's been around since the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really cool to see, you know, the evolution of things as far as college athletics go. Um, you know, and you get some of those names like that. And it doesn't get as any more obscure than minor league baseball does, but oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> there's yeah. always some inventive names in that. But obviously, um, so it's going to be exciting. Uh, Atlantis University coming to town, 11:30 a.m. kick from Thresher Stadium, and we'll have the coverage of the KCAC Network. 11:30 a.m. kick. It, mm -hmm. It's it's been a while since Bethel's played that early on a Saturday, and I anticipate you know in the low 90s it could be hot. Yeah, may, may, maybe it's been a while. In, in the beginning of the season, since yeah. they played, but, but they played West Texas at eleven thirty. Well, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. just at home at least. Yeah, at home. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. been it's seemingly been a while since that has been a thing. Yeah. But we, we were trying to get ESPN Game Day to come down. That's oh all. yeah, <laughs> we wanted it right here, Bethel and Atlanta. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you typically, you know, as the KCAC season typically goes, early games are usually night games. Although we we got sunburnt pretty bad at a Avila a couple years ago, yes, we did uh, playing an afternoon ball game. But uh, you know, the good thing about it is um, you get back up on at home and play in the evening next week, and then just break down the schedule for you here on the Thresher Football Show. Week zero against Atlantis University at home, 11:30 a.m. McPherson College coming to town, uh, at 6 p.m. kick. On September 3rd, September 10th, I don't need to tell you who's playing that game, but it, it is in Wichita, and uh, Bethel goes on the road for the first time, and then another tough road game in uh, September 17th at Kansas Wesleyan, a team that you are eager to uh, get over the hill and finally defeat. Uh, obviously, you know, there's some people that picked them to be in the top of the conference, and no doubt, based on reputation, they're up there to start the season. Um, those two road games in a row, then you come back at home on September 24th, and that's home against Ottawa. And then you kind of go back and forth at Bethany the following week, and that is an afternoon kick October 1st. And then Southwestern at home October 8th, 6 p.m. I believe that's also Fall Fest. Yes, sir. And, Fall uh, Fest. <laughs> Well, you know, that's always a dandy. I mean, the last two years, um, you know, going down to the wire, yeah. um, whether it's Zach Esau. A actually, 
three years, but well, the, the third year went to the wire. We were on the wrong side of it. Exactly. Well, three <laughs> years ago, 2019, yeah. down there in Winfield. I remember that one. Yeah, up 17 to nothing at half, and yeah. that was – we don't want to talk about that. Yeah. But the last two seasons have been spectacular against yes. Southwestern. Um, you know, Zach Esau, go ahead, touchdown, and quite the comeback and the poise that that team had in that game. And then last year at Southwestern, um, you know, so many things had to go well in overtime, and they went the Thresher's way. And a, a Cam Harrison halfback pass to Tanner Gallier, and then and a Trey Palmer pick sealed the deal. But they, Southwestern will come to town. Um, one of the top teams in the conference, no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, national pundits definitely picking them high mm -hmm. in the NAIA polls. But they come to town October 8th for a 6 p.m. kick. Then you guys go October 15th, afternoon kick at Avila, going back up to Kansas City. It's been a few years. Um, then Sterling comes to town October 22nd mm -hmm. and at Tabor on October 29th for the Menno Bowl and then rounding out the regular season November 5th at home against the University of St. Mary Spires. So kind of your standard um, conference schedule. I know with Evangel coming in in 2023, the goal is to, you know, to play everybody, but mm -hmm. also to have divisions and have an opportunity to send at least two schools yes. to the postseason, maybe even more. I mean, after last season, you could argue that there should have been three. Yeah. Obviously, Bethel has an interest in that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's kind of interesting to see uh, the trends within the conference. There's so many teams that have a stretch of years where they're, they're very good programs. Yeah. I mean, Bethany at one time, uh, Ottawa, Friends as well, kind of thinking of, you know, historically and yeah. Tabor as well um, but uh, yeah it, it just seems like the last few years uh, obviously Kansas Wesleyan has been a, a constant there yep. um, Southwestern has definitely emerged and obviously you know Bethel College mm -hmm. um, you know 2019 season on has been up there towards the top of the conference and so well I, I mean what do you think about the, the, the kind of state of things within the conference uh, top to bottom going into the 2022 season you know, I think it's the the conference is in is in a great is in great shape, great position. Uh, you've got uh, a a lot of really good coaches all over this conference, and uh, even even with some some of the movement, you know, the the coaches uh, that have taken over some programs and things that there's familiarity uh, within the conference and and things like that. So I think it's uh, I think it's primed and ready. I think the best thing that's happening is Evangel's getting in and it's splitting uh, because th this conference is it's tough. Uh, the KCAC is a is a really really tough football conference, and I think that's great uh, for the young men who decide to come and play at these these schools, uh, knowing that you're playing some of the best. Uh, some of the best competition in the country uh, at the NAI level, week in and week out, uh, and 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 I'm excited to to just be a part of it. Absolutely, I remember having conversations this off season once that announcement was made about Evangel about what the potential divisions could be, um, whether north, south, east, west, and I think it's going to be a little bit of based on a, you know results. Yeah, it's as results well. Based. So mm -hmm. yeah, so we could see some really interesting divisions yeah. uh, over the next few years and I think they're still trying to name those potentially so if you have ideas <laughs> get a hold of the KCAC office and uh, let them know who you think should be <laughs> the name the division should be named after that is so well coach uh, we're kind of wrapping up our first show of the year um, you know it's it, we did that first show there when you got first got hired and mm -hmm. you know what's been a difference between now and then in your mind uh, as far as taking this job on um, so when I when I first came on, uh, I, I I literally I think I told you I took the job just expecting uh, everything to go wrong and not not like on on account of of Bethel but you know it's just you can't take a job expecting everything to go right and then everything goes wrong and now you're out in the cold and you know you're not in a good position so I had to take it thinking that you know the recruiting season was going to be hard. Players were going to leave. I wasn't going to have the coaches that I needed. And, and, and it's just been completely different. Um, recruiting season uh, went, went really, really well. Um, the coaches who, who stayed on and joined us ha have been awesome. I just love them and their families. Uh, the, the players have buy-in, ha has been great. So uh, my level is, of expectation has, has just risen. Absolutely. Well, it's been interesting to see the how the program has evolved under your wing. Um, obviously, you know, there's been a lot of 
we've seen what it has been like previously um and you you were a little bit a part of that as well and mm -hmm. it's just been really impressive to me to see um because of what i get to see behind the scenes and i try to showcase it the best i can yes, through right. video over the course of the season um but uh you know it's really impressive to me just how much you take an interest in relationships and just even the slightest details about players and coaches to the extent to you know what their mentality is like what what are their belief systems like because you want to encourage them you want to build them into people that are more than football players absolutely absolutely and that's just uh that made the biggest difference uh in my life uh, because it's been said around here forever football's gonna end Football is going to end, and you know, and, and all you're going to really be left with is, is the people around you. And so the relationships matter; they yeah. matter. And uh, and not only that, it's fun to get to know people and to, to watch them uh, develop. And it's just it, it's fun for me. That's really uh, the best part of this job is is watching these young men and these coaches and you know this program grow. Absolutely. You got guys from everywhere coming together, you know, so many different backgrounds and everything. And it really is kind of, you know, colleges and universities are like almost, you know, a, you know, a, a small version of the world. Yes. In, in, in an extent. And there's so many things out there and just to see and to, you know, see things from other perspectives. And it's all obviously very healthy. And uh, uh, I know that your guys are just completely it's seemingly engaged with each other. I know there's been a few times that players kind of in practice kind of had a few run-ins oh, and yeah. things like that, but yeah. things have smoothened out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that, that happens, you know, uh, but it's, it's my goal when things like that happen to use it as a as a uh, teaching opportunity. And that's exactly what we did. Had two young men um, get into a, a scuffle after the whistle. I made them have lunch together and learn about each other. And now they see each other and – you know, they, they really are. They're really friends. They know each other instead of just saying, hey, that's going to happen or making them run about it. No, it's like, you know, you, you, you're, you're fine. You're getting into it with your, with your brother, with a mm -hmm. teammate here. And if we're going to be that, we got to be it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm sure I have other questions, Coach, but that's all the time we have this week for the Thresher Football Show. And uh, I'm excited for this season. The 2022 season is here in Bethel and Atlantis University. We'll take the field at Thresher Stadium at 11.30 a.m. And it should be a great one for, to start the season. And uh, we can't wait to see what the results are like, offense, defense, special teams, everything. And we hope that you're there. If you can't make it there, go to the KCACnetwork.com or the KCAC Network app. You can watch that. I'll be broadcasting uh, from the, the press box area here at Thresher Stadium. But until next time, I'm Dan Page. He's Coach A.B. Stokes. Roll on. Roll on.